we have to talk a little bit about this this article courtesy of Hypebeast regarding L as how, what do you pronounce it i think it's as S, S law luxotica Acelia luxotica i think that's how you call it right the eyewear company um loads of i think they have license to produce eyewear for like you know i think ralph armani exchange oakley ray-bans they're basically the ones that make it because if you're not familiar a lot of fashion brands don't actually make their own eye eyewear sunglasses they have they they have other companies make them for them and they just use the brand name essentially licensing um so now supreme has been acquired by them from vf corp um vf corp purchased i think supreme in like 2000 um for like two billion or something but now they're being sold again to associate exotica so this might be proof that vf corp was maybe struggling to grow supreme and didn't really see any avenue to increase profits because if you buy a company like supreme a brand like supreme you want to increase the profits but the problem is the whole reason why supreme is successful is because of scarcity people like supreme because it's limited but if you keep building you keep growing you keep opening more stores in you know increasing the skus you kind of cheapen the exclusivity scarcity thing about the brand and when you cheapen it that means you won't sell as much if you don't sell as much you don't make as much money you get angry investors and boardroom members and everything goes left so i understand why vf corp are like you know what let's just drop this and get some money back but they took a bit of a hit because i think they sold it for they bought it for two but they sold it for one and then they also opened stores and i think the last store that's opening now under their tenure is a miami one so they have invested quite a bit into the company and probably haven't seen much return you imagine so a bit of a blow but i'm interested to see what um Asilo losotica will do with supreme going forward so let's continues on it says as follows here it is um after months of speculation vf corporation is officially selling supreme the streetwear imprint is set to be acquired by the global optical industry leader Asilo loxotica um, Luxottica Essler released a statement confirming that the company has entered into a definitive agreement to acquire Supreme for $1.5 billion in cash. The streetwear brand, previously bought by VF Corp in November 2020 for $2.1 billion USD, um, Essler Luxottica owns some of the most iconic eyewear brands, including Ray Ban and Oakley. In the past, the company also partnered with some of the biggest names in the luxury, from Lauf Lauren to Burberry, Prada, Miu Miu, Chanel, just to name a few. Despite this position in the optical market, they will not change Supreme's. This will not change Supreme's operation as a global lifestyle apparel brand. Supreme's founder James Jebbia will still remain involved in the brand's growth and development. In a statement, he said, "In Associa Luxottica, we have a unique partner that understands that we are at our best when we stay true to the brand and continue to operate and grow as we have for the past 30 years. This move lets us focus on the brand, our products, and our customers while setting us up for long-term success." The funny thing is, I'm surprised he survived because whenever a company, investment company comes in and tries or buys, successfully buys your company, usually founders find it very hard to work like that in that situation because, you know, with, 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 with Supreme, James Jebby has literally birthed the brand from its inception. He was there sweeping the floors, opening the stores in the morning, closing them, doing the cash ups and stuff, um, doing, doing the teal closing and shit. He's Supreme, right? To go from that and kind of being an elevated employee must be a weird thing to kind of adapt to and to change to. But he has done that. And it's really interesting because he's kind of run, he's, he can't, he's been running Supreme as an independent brand for the majority of its inception or for the majority of time it's been around. To suddenly then go to be working in a quote unquote corporate environment must be a bit of an adjustment. But the fact that he's done it is proof that, you know, smart cookie and maybe explains why he's been around for so long it's something that i also saw as one of the main great traits of virgil r.i.p to virgil abloh his ability to kind of not only do his own thing with off-white but also seamlessly work with big corporations and brands for collaborations he never seemed to have an issue you know in basically you know uh making adjustments and everything else in between to achieve his goal whereas i feel like a lot of creators find it hard to kind of navigate that and always kind of stick with the purest thing and don't know how to kind of go commercial and make that work so james jebby deserves a lot of credit for that and it also might explain why the brand is so good still. I think so to this day, because despite all the investment, 
they still haven't kind of let go of what they're good at and what they know best to do maybe there's been a bit maybe there's been some missteps with some items here and there but i think by and large items still sell out collaborations are still very coveted and it kind of just continues chugging along despite the more stores opening and there definitely being an increase in product it just seems that all the popular stuff still sells out nothing sits especially collaborations and it all just continues ticking over so first of all your, your interest is not like why you know why even want to get absorbed by another company but i guess in associate exotica because they're optical eyewear leaders maybe there's something there to be said for supreme maybe thinking long term they would want to have them produce some of their eyewear maybe they're already doing it um because you'd imagine with eyewear being so cheap to produce but you can sell it at a crazy markup maybe there's an avenue which sounds kind of wild to think this aloud but maybe there's an avenue there's an option there's a possibility that supreme's eyewear could be very lucrative they could get to a position where they're like you know what we're going to actually let the eyewear be sold in stores that aren't supreme because now the only way you can buy supreme is directly from them whether online or from their stores but what if there's a solution in the deal where they have ability to have like kiosk in different department stores selling supreme sunglasses officially from them but it's just done through a like a lot of like they do with other brands so maybe you go through an airport and you'll see a stand that sells like you know supreme latest collection of sunglasses that also might increase the amount of sales that they make past you know in passing for people that aren't even that familiar with the brand and just see it in weird places so that might be the place i don't and i don't and i think that that sort of thing won't cheapen the brand i don't think if you saw a stand selling supreme glasses at heathrow airport that you'd think it's not cool anymore Maybe if you saw an entire store there, you would. But I think if they're just selling glasses, it wouldn't be too much of an issue. And also, there's a possibility that because it's also Lozotica has a relationship with all these brands, maybe there's a possibility that, you know, Supreme wants long-term, you know, help in introducing them to certain people in the industry. Maybe like Oakley. Maybe there's a possibility that Supreme does a collaboration with Oakley and not only does glasses, but does also some ready to wear or some clothing, sorry, collaborations. So there's loads of avenues and networking and circles that could open. I guess maybe as a fan, you're going to be a little bit dubious about this because with investment, you always have to give up something. You never get people's money and you just get to do what you want. When people give you money, they usually expect things from you especially you know when they give you like you know fucking or not give you but when they give it the other company that whatever investment they put into the company they will want something back from it so most likely you have to give up something that might mean more expansion than what you're comfortable with and increasing quantities <clears throat> maybe collaborations that you probably would never consider maybe different hiring strategies maybe more employees something that might eventually end up diluting the brand but I'm curious to see how it develops and how it goes because it seems it seems it seems on paper to be a bit of a no-brainer deal but i also know sometimes these things don't play out the way you think they are but at the moment um supreme is now in the press i think they're going to try and close the deal by the end of the year but it's no longer under vf corp um and i'm also curious to see it know as well from people that actually work there i wonder if it's if they've noticed an actual change because it almost feels like they operate on their own. So even though they got bought by VF Corp, it didn't feel like they had to move their head office to like some fancy building somewhere. They were still where they were. And then, but they had this investment from VF Corp, but then they had no real involvement with the day-to-day -day business, apart from maybe the stores and maybe the creative director role, right? That Tremaine Emery was hired for. I don't know. I wonder um, if, it, if they feel it. But maybe they don't because James Jebbia kind of protects them from that and kind of remains the go-to person. I'm not too sure. But either way, curious to see how it develops going forward. Miami store is meant to be opening soon as well. So maybe that will give us an indication of what's going on forward. And maybe if we stopped, because I think they, it felt like we were seeing a new store open every year. So I want, because I think they opened a South Korea one before the Miami one now. There's one in Milan as well open recently. So I wonder, maybe we'll see a slowdown in the store's openings. That will give us an idea that they're trying to scale things back a bit and keep it kind of low. But I think with investment, the investors, they always want fucking incremental gains. They always want up, up. They want everything to go up. They want the chart to keep going up forever. So I don't know if they're going to be able to remain indie and move the way they do with people's money like that. You know what I mean? You have to kind of give up something. Um, going on from that, the one and only Tremaine Emery decided to...
let us know his feelings regarding Supreme selling um, or VF Corp selling Supreme to Elsie Lozotica. And he says some cryptic statement, which I don't really know what this means. I think it's him saying this like drug dealer vernacular to appear like cool and shit. But he made this tweet sub subbing the whole issue. Um, always n never putting a name on it, by the way, but subbing it and saying Pax wasn't moving on the streets. So they run that weight off wholesale and cut their losses. So I guess he's trying to say that maybe Supreme wasn't selling as well as it was, was um, in the past. And I guess um, VF Corp realized this, tried to sell off what they had, and then obviously sell off the remaining for a bulk price to get it to get it off their hands, basically, because no one wants to have like dead stock. I get that, but I just gotta wonder, man. Like, what's wrong with this guy? I hope to God I don't ever end up like this. And I wonder if this is like an age thing. Or if he really, really, really got burned in a way that we don't understand. Because he just can't seem to let this go. He's left. Yes, he left in not so nice way. The circumstances around it were pretty bad. Maybe a little bit embarrassing the way he got ridiculed and kind of spoke about online. Because for a long time, Tremaine was regarded quite highly. Especially when Virgil was still alive. R.I.P. to Virgil Abloh. But he was regarded quite highly people looked at him like a serious designer they saw him like as a cool interesting dude he was never seen as a joke but then as soon as kanye started going on him as soon as this supreme stuff started happening the sentiment around has him has changed and i feel like the sentiment around him changing has also changed how people look at denim tears i feel like before people were fairly okay with the continuous use of the fucking cotton reef right on all those clothes that he does right and the pattern itself people loved it but I feel like people's sentiment around the cotton reef has changed because they don't seem to like him and think he's corny, think he's annoying. They don't like the fact that he's married to a white woman and he speaks about black issues all the time, blah, 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 blah. So I feel like that has had a very negative effect on his perception. Maybe not the business, maybe he's doing more well than he's ever done before and he's making more money than he's ever done with the increased exposure and the fact that the brand is booming, he's got a store and it's sold in all these different stores, cool. But this guy can't seem to get over the fact that he's no longer Supreme Creative Director. And it's very strange to me because as great as Supreme is, as much as I love the brand and I would love to work there and I was always idolized the place and always been buying it since I was a kid. It's just the brand. I think if I was Tremaine, I'd be way more excited and energized by my own shit. He's got the ability to essentially write his own future with making his own brand. He's got the ability to like change the course of his own life by doing his own thing. He's got the ability to leave his kids and his family with something tangible that they could kind of take over and feed themselves with and stuff. That's, that's got to be quite awesome. And also the fact that you have a brand that I don't think it's on the same level as Supreme, don't get me wrong, but in terms of its price and where it's located and stores and shit, it's basically at the same level, if not maybe a bit higher. So why are you bothered? Do you know, like, like, I don't know. It just seems odd, especially considering all the stuff that he's got going for him. It just seems odd to be this hatery because it would make more sense if he was this much of a hater and wouldn't let it go if Denim Tears was suffering as well. If, like, he left, he left if, like, he got five of Supreme and then Denim Tears also was going through a bad time and he was trying to sell things and it wasn't going well and he's discounting everything. But it's like, I can't remember ever seeing Denim Tears on sale, like, discounted. It always sells out, especially the Cotton Reef shit, especially some of the collaborations. So it's like, bro, your brand is booming. You're still well regarded and shit amongst you think with industry people. You just had one bad job. People have bad jobs all the time. Just move on, bro. It's not that big of a deal. Move the fuck on. But he doesn't want to move on, and he seems to be beholden and you know by supreme. And every time something goes wrong, he always kind of throws out a little fucking subtweet. It's really bizarre. I don't know what's going on, but maybe there's more to the story than meets the eye. Either way, I just hope I never become this lame. Um, maybe it's an age thing. Maybe it's a cynicism thing because you're in the scene for so long. Industry, you've seen some stuff behind the scenes that you don't like. But I just pray to God that I just always remain a fan. And always remain appreciative about all the opportunities and shit that come my way. Because being like this is just weird. Weird, 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 weird. Continuing on with that. I just went to check out some comments here, courtesy of the Supreme um, Instagram account Drops SGG, regarding the news of Supreme being sold to Excelsior Lazotica for 1.5 billion. Because I think the kids that actually buy this stuff day to day 
they don't seem to be put off by any of this shit. Um, and I love this because they just buy the brand. They don't care about the business side because, you know, the, the business side doesn't really matter behind the scenes because as long as the brand is still giving you what you need, you won't really care who owns it or who does what. But I think obviously the main reason why it's still there and popping is this man right here, James Jebbia. He's the one. If, if he leaves, if he leaves, I think we'll definitely see the brand implode pretty quickly. And maybe go for a bit of a lull, the same way Stussy did when Sun Stussy left. And now they're obviously back and doing great things. But I think he's the one that kind of keeps it together. Um, but let's see what the comments on Drops GG said regarding the sale. Um, what are people saying here? So someone saying here, RIP Supreme, hold on to your throwback for they may never be like this again. Off to Bape I go. Imagine, imagining abandoning Supreme to buy what Bape are doing now. IT own Bape. Bape without Nigo is pointless it's horrible some of the stuff they make legitimately belongs in the volcano have you seen those vans they put out have you seen how bad those fucking vans look honestly swapping supreme for bape now is just insane like that lack of taste is just like frightening another person who remembers how much vf paid for buying supreme it was something like two billion another person is james jb gonna return to creative control this that's real hopefully this won't ruin the brand how many bills is that how many bills how many kilos is it safe to assume that the prices will go up? I think probably not. If anything, they might go down, especially if they increase SKUs. Um, resold at almost half the price only four years later, a bad signal. I don't think so. I think it's resold half the price because they don't really know what to do with it, you know? Because there's only so much value you can add to a brand like Supreme without really going for proper expansion. Because proper expansion, you can maybe add more value to it, but they kind of have to keep themselves relatively small because that's the whole point of supreme it's meant to be exclusive right um if you start opening stores all around the world and start having it sold in department stores you know it might increase the amount of stuff you sell but then you also increase the likelihood of stuff sitting and when stuff sits it takes away the cork back to the core factor gone your brand's dead supreme versace supreme oakley supreme prada supreme polo yeah that's definitely going to happen because they all own the licenses for that, especially the glasses so we might see f you know more glasses collaboration with these brands worst decision ever this guy says damn first vf now this another person says this will not ruin the brand supreme cannot be ruined unless it's sold to zoomies which will never happen the only solidifies a brand into luxury platform and remains exclusive to the streetwear sure most of the men news the old generation of this brand can seem played out but most no matter what age who respect production product and brand supreme will continue to defy odds and remain the number one brand in cross-culture society okay nice positive way to end it there so big up supreme hopefully it does go on to doing great things and it doesn't end and things continue trucking along you can only hope you can only 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 hope